Coming up on today's show, the Tesla Model S Plaid snatches the production electric vehicle track record from the Porsche Taycan Turbo on the world-famous Nürburgring, beating the Porsche by nearly 12 seconds, China leads the world in installed offshore wind for 2020, and Elon Musk says that he agrees with ARK Investment's evaluation that Tesla stock could soon be worth $3,000 a share if Tesla executes really well. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another episode of TN, Transport Evolved News. I hope that if you were celebrating the Jewish New Year this week, you had a very happy New Year. And if you weren't, well, I hope you also had an awesome week. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Stick around until the end of the show to find out how joining the EAA can help you finance your own clean energy or transportation purchase. We're starting today's show with a truly impressive new lap time set by a production Tesla Model S Plaid on the world famous Nürburgring in Germany. The attempt made earlier this week with Swedish professional race car driver Andreas Simonsen behind the wheel beat the previous production electric car record by 11.431 seconds. The previous record was set back in 2019 by a Porsche Taycan Turbo. The Tesla Model S Plaid, which by the way had no modifications to its drivetrain for the attempt and was running on road legal shoes, is now officially the quickest production EV to run the course. That said, I should note that Porsche has yet to send its range-topping Taycan Turbo S around the ring, which could claw back some of the 11 plus seconds Tesla stole from Porsche. But the car most likely to steal Tesla's crown? The limited production, oh so expensive, Rimac Nivera, a car that has almost twice the Model S Plaid's power. Sticking with the racing theme, Tesla's current rival on the Nürburgring, Porsche, unveiled its take on an all-electric future for the company's motorsport at the IAA in Munich this week, the Porsche Mission R Concept. An out-and-out -out GT racer, the Mission R Concept pushes all of the right buttons when it comes to what most people look for in a classic GT. Built from the ground up with natural fibre reinforced plastic body panels rather than carbon fibre, which means it results in an 85% smaller carbon footprint, the Mission R is powered by an 82 kilowatt hour, 900 volt battery pack, driving a 4,073 horsepower all-wheel drivetrain. Porsche says it can do the stoplight sprint in two and a half seconds with a top speed of 186 miles per hour. That's 300 kilometers per hour. It's a functional working vehicle which you could imagine going out onto the track any day. And Porsche seems to be hinting that's what we can expect in the future, commenting that the functional prototype previews a race certified vehicle as well as a road going GT version. Be still my beating heart. As we've covered numerous times on this channel, it's now far more affordable for utility companies to commission renewable energy generation capacity than it is for them to install or upgrade fossil fuel based power stations. This week, we learned that last year, a total of 6.1 gigawatts of offshore wind generation projects were commissioned. While that's slightly down from the 2019 record of 6.24 gigawatts, I think we can blame COVID, China dominated offshore wind power commissioning for the third straight year, accounting for one half of all new offshore wind generation projects commissioned in 2020. But, warns the Global Wind Energy Council, last year's installed offshore wind is only 11% of the capacity needed to meet global net zero targets by 2050, and only 2% of what we need to actually minimize the effects of anthropogenic climate change. We best get on with it. TikTok. After a long wait and lots of teasing, Renault finally unveiled its latest production electric car, the all-new Renault Megane E-Tech Electric at the IIA in Munich this week. Powered by a next-generation NCM battery that Renault says has been designed to fit into its new CMF EV platform on which the Megane E-Tech Electric is based, Renault will offer two choices of battery capacity, a 40 kilowatt hour or 60 kilowatt hour option, as well as two motor options, 96 kilowatts or 160 kilowatts both of which can charge at up to 130 kilowatts from a compatible charging station. The larger battery promises up to 292 miles, 470 kilometers on the WLTP test cycle and has a new heat pump that promises better winter range performance without sacrificing heat. There's no word on the pricing yet, but expect that very soon. 
For some time, Tesla has offered customers in certain parts of the US the option to lease or subscribe to Tesla solar energy products rather than buying them outright. This made it easier for some customers to be able to afford Tesla solar panels in the first place since you had zero costs up front. But now Tesla has removed subscription options from its online store, shifting instead to the traditional cash or loan options that most solar providers offer. It's not clear what the reasons for this are, but if I had to guess, it's likely high demand for Tesla's energy products combined with less risk for Tesla. Under the subscription model, it was possible to subscribe to Tesla's panels and then cancel it a few months or years down the road, leading to extra headaches for both parties when it came to figuring out how to remove the panels. With solar technology getting cheaper and outright purchases getting more affordable, not to mention the rise in solar loan products, I think solar subscription models are slowly going to disappear anyway. For many years now, anyone wanting a commercial electric vehicle in parts of Europe, New Zealand or Asia have had the option of going for a Nissan ENV200. On sale for nearly as long as the Nissan LEAF, the all-electric variant of Nissan's popular commercial vehicle is available with a wide range of variants, including a high-roofed cargo-oriented variant, a seven-seat people carrier, and a cargo van. But these days, the ENV200 is showing its age, which is perhaps why Nissan is readying to showcase a brand new light commercial vehicle with an all-electric drivetrain. This week, Nissan dropped some teaser videos of the same, showing a vehicle that we think has a lot more Nissan Aria about it than Nissan Leaf. It also looks like Chidemo is well and truly dead outside of Japan and China, with a small, more compact CCS port on the nose. When we have more info, we will share. Multimodal transportation, when you use more than one method of travel to get to your destination, has been a buzzword in the EV and low-carbon transit world for a number of years. But at the IAA this week, Polestar and Cake unveiled a joint project that's a little different to the classic idea of using your car to get to the train station and then letting the train take the strain. A special variant of the Cake Mocha moped that can be towed on a carrier behind a Polestar 2. So far, you think such a combination isn't out of the ordinary. People have been carrying small and medium motorcycles on the back of trailer hitches for decades. But what makes this special is the fact that the Mocha charges while it's being carried, drawing its power from the Polestar 2. It's the perfect combination of car and moped, and while we love the trunk scooter idea Honda did a few years ago, this is also pretty darned cool. Ever since it entered onto the stock market, Tesla's value has continued to soar. And sure, there have been ups and downs, but today Tesla is worth nearly 20,000% more than it was when it launched. By market cap, it's the most valuable automotive company in the world. In the past, Elon Musk has opined that he felt Tesla was overpriced, something that drew some curious stares from some on Wall Street and frustration from investors. But this week, Musk stood beside Wall Street analysis Kathy Wood from ARK Invest, who stated this week that Tesla's base stock price target by 2025 should be $3,000 a share. After Wood told Yahoo Finance that Tesla's performance shows no sign of slowing, Musk wrote in an email to employees that he agrees, stating that, quote, if we execute really well, I agree with ARK Invest. Tesla stock hasn't risen quite yet, but give it time. Canadian battery recycling specialist Lycycle has experienced a massive expansion in the last few years as more and more electric cars hit the road and more and more battery packs need recycling. And this week it's announced the start of construction of a fourth battery recycling facility that it says will be capable of recycling up to 5,000 tonnes of manufacturing scrap and end-of-life batteries per year. The facility will be built in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and will work alongside Mercedes-Benz to recycle manufacturing scrap from its nearby electric vehicle production facility. After their factory is operational, Lifecycle says it will be able to recycle upwards of 25,000 tons per year, but notes that it's designing the new Alabama facility to have the option to double its capacity. It's great to see more recycling for lithium-ion batteries, and it helps ensure EVs just keep getting lower and lower carbon footprints. We have been following the ongoing battery recall involving the Chevrolet Bolt EV and Bolt EUV for a number of months now, and as we noted in last week's show, GM has stated that it won't resume making battery packs or cars until it has confidence that LG Energy can produce fault-free cells. This week we got an update when Autoblog reported that GM has now confirmed its Orin production facility where the Bolt and Bolt EUV are made will remain idle at least until September 24th. With no batteries being produced and no 
battery packs being made, this pushes back the wait for thousands of Volt EV owners around the world who just want a functional electric car whose battery pack isn't fully available to use because of fire risks. As usual, we'll keep you posted on any updates as and when they happen. And now it's time for Short Shorts. For 2022, the Polestar 2 electric performance sedan has received a 7% increase in EPA rated range. The improvement is likely down to smaller wheels and a change in how the car was officially tested. The governor of the US state of New York has signed a bill that requires all new light duty cars and trucks sold in the state to be zero emission by 2035, with medium and heavy duty trucks following 10 years after that. Nissan and Waseda University have begun testing a jointly developed process for recovering valuable earth metals when recycling electric vehicle drive motors. The goal is to have the process ready for implementation by mid-decade. The world got a glimpse of an exciting possible future for EVs recently when Toyota released a video that purports to show a road testing of a prototype EV made with solid-state batteries. Sadly though, Toyota is still campaigning against EV adoption, so... Bosch has shown a new EV charging cable that is supposed to be lighter and more convenient thanks to dispensing with the bulky charging brick of a granny cable. The electronics are hidden away in the handle and it's certainly easier to carry. A new joint report by the Electrification Coalition and Atlas Public Policy finds that moving the US Federal Vehicle Fleet to EVs by 2030, not even counting the US Postal Service, could save American taxpayers $4.6 billion a year. According to the US Department of Energy, three of the five US states with the most electric vehicles in them don't have mandates requiring zero emission sales. But that may be down to those states simply having very high numbers of overall car sales. Hyundai has released its Hydrogen Way vision for shaping a hydrogen-oriented society by 2040, with a commitment to hydrogen technology for energy storage, power generation, and of course, mobility and transportation. The US Patent and Trademark Office has granted Tesla a patent for a laser-based alternative to windscreen wipers. Wiper technology is now over 100 years old and could maybe use some updating, but we think that Tesla's previous idea, electromagnetic wipers, will be seen long before lasers. Polestar showed a three-wheel electric transporter, such as you might see in a factory or an airport, at the IAA Mobility Show. It's clever and useful-looking piece of kit developed in collaboration with Cake, but we don't understand why it was shown under the Polestar nameplate. Microlino has shown off a production version of its Microlino 2.0 city car at IAA Munich. With three battery sizes yielding from 95 to 230 kilometers of range and a top speed of 90 kilometers per hour, it wants Europeans to fall in love with bubble cars all over again. The United Auto Workers Union is not as all in on electric vehicles as US President Joe Biden's past comments have implied. The union has in fact declined to officially back the president's electrification targets, citing concerns about potential job losses. Aviation startup Wright Electric is testing a 2 megawatt motor intended for use in zero emission aircraft. The motor, which has 10 kilowatts per kilogram specific power, is intended for use on the Wright One regional passenger aircraft. Hyundai has teased its Ioniq 7 large electric SUV. It's probably a safe assumption that the model will have three rows of seats and looks a lot larger than the Ioniq 5, but it won't enter into production until after the Ioniq 6 sedan has launched. A US federal judge ruled against three Native American tribes trying to block expansion of a lithium mine in Nevada. The tribes say the mine threatens to destroy ancestral sites where their families and ancestors were massacred. Previous suits from environmental groups were also ruled against them in the mine's favor. Tesla police vehicles are now becoming a common sight around the world, and now Ford EVs are getting the chance to put on the blues and twos, with Ford developing variants of its Mark E crossover for testing by the UK Metropolitan Police, among other UK police forces. The European Aviation Safety Agency has granted approval to the SkyCharge electric aviation charging solution that aims to rapidly charge the battery packs of electric planes. It's the first OEM independent rapid charging unit approved for aviation use. The 2021 Toyota Mirai hydrogen fuel cell vehicle has received a five-star rating on its official crash tests from Euro NCAP. The Mirai scored better than 85% on both adult and child occupant safety. 
EV charging equipment provider Wallbox has unveiled its newest and most powerful unit to date. Called the Hypernova Charging Station, it can provide up to 350 kilowatts of power and adapts its supply based on how many cars are charging. Great Wall Motors has announced that its Aura Cat electric hatchback is coming to the European market. The Cat's spec sheet isn't that exciting, but it certainly evokes the design of past Volkswagen Beetles. It could sell well if priced right. Škoda has showcased its upcoming Enyaq Coupe 4 ahead of its official launch. The slope-backed version of the Škoda's Enyaq crossover certainly isn't a coupe in the traditional sense. We think it's more a sedan, but automakers are doing weird things with naming these days, so eh. The US state of New Mexico has laws banning automakers from selling directly to customers outside of a dealership. Now Tesla and the Nambe Pueblo tribe have found a workaround, with Tesla opening a showroom and service center on tribal lands where state laws do not apply. Electric vehicle startup Aptera has reopened its capital funding drive. It will remain open until all available shares are sold, August 2022, or whenever Aptera chooses to close it. The UK government has officially promised to induce legislation to require all new homes and offices built in the UK to have dedicated EV charging stations. The idea is to make sure that owning and using an EV becomes a no-brainer for UK citizens. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. If you don't live in Europe, then you probably don't know how important the continent's public rail system is. And yes, while the UK rail system is overpriced and often late, mainland Europe's rail system is truly a beauty to behold. Much of the mainland European rail network is electrified with overhead power lines, but for routes where building electrical pylons is problematic, diesel electric engines have traditionally been the go-to. But battery electric trains are on the horizon, and this week Alsom presented its take on the battery electric multiple unit train. Based on a similar chassis to the company's hydrogen fuel cell train, which is what you're actually seeing in this video, the battery electric train can use its onboard batteries or take power from overhead power lines where available. Just say goodbye to smelly diesel trains. And finally, earlier this week, I had a little rant on this channel after seeing the new smart concept number one EV debut at IAA in Munich. <laughs> I won't retell it here, but suffice to say I, and apparently many of you from the comments, felt the smart concept number one crossover EV wasn't really a smart car, and many of us were raising a glass to the brand's spiritual death. But just as that was happening, at the very same show, XEV was debuting its take on a city electric car, the XEV Yo-Yo. It's a two-seat EV with a similar footprint to the original Smart for 2 ED, and while it doesn't have the top speed of the Smart, it's limited to around 80 kilometers per hour or 50 miles per hour, has swappable battery packs. Oh, and the best bit? It's 3D printed. That's right, an entire car that is made with 3D printed parts. It's cute, efficient, and nerdy. Sign me up! And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. The EAA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you find an EV educator or in fact become one. And it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a brand new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EAA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. Find out more by heading to electricauto.org. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel, hitting the bell, and doing the same to our two other channels as well. That's Transport Evolved Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts. We would love it if you'd support us through Patreon or Ko-fi if you're so inclined. And don't forget that you can buy your own TE swag at our Red Bubble store. The link is below. And if you're feeling chatty, do drop by our free to join Discord chat room. Other members of the team are gonna be back next week. I'm not here, I'm on a couple of trips, but until then, Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.